So, welcome back everyone! In this episode I will show you how I installed the baseboard and spoil board on my Queen Bee Pro CNC router. I'm sure there are many ways to do this, but the way I chose is really simple and quite effective so far. I started by ripping down the plywood that formed the baseboard on the CNC. And while doing this I once again realized that I really need a track saw, so if you want to see me convert the circular saw I'm using to track saw, give a shout out in the comments. The baseboard will be attached to the aluminium extrusion with T-nuts and M5 screws. And luckily enough I had ordered a whole bunch of them a while back. The T-nuts that is. The footage from this entire video is mostly clips left over from filming the other episodes about my writer. I didn't want them to go to waste so I'm experimenting a bit with doing a voiceover. So far I feel a bit awkward so don't expect too much but we'll see how it goes. If you want to see more content like this in the future, leave a comment. Now this method with the T-nuts worked fairly well, but I did mess up a bit and forgot to measure exactly where the holes were supposed to be, so I had to force it a bit, but in the end it worked out fine. The spoil board itself will be made out of 18mm MDF. To attach the spoil board to the baseboard, I use a trick I've seen online several times in the last couple of years, but I haven't really tried it myself. We use painter's tape and super glue to hold it down. So you add painter's tape to both pieces you want to attach to each other, you use super glue on the painter's tape on one side, and then activator on the other. I suppose you could do it without the activator as well, but it's quicker this way. This should also ensure that I can replace the spoil board fairly easy in the future when it gets too damaged from all the milling. Now before installing the board as you see here I had measured up and put some extra pieces of wood in place to line it up perfectly. Now to be able to ensure that I have a perfectly square and straight front edge of the table, I cut off this overhang on the spoil board with the CNC router itself. I did take fairly conservative cuts here because I wasn't entirely sure about what the machine was capable of at this point. In hindsight, I could have gone a lot faster and used deeper cuts as well. Here you see me performing the first facing cut of the spoil board. And I'm only using a 6mm end mill here, and you might be asking yourself why, but there is a good reason for it. The thing is, I haven't trammed in the mill completely, meaning I'm not exactly sure if the router itself is at an angle in regards to the table or not. And this gives me a few problems, which I will illustrate right now. So imagine I was using a really wide cutter, let's say 30 millimeters wide. And the router isn't completely square to the table. All the individual cuts would be at an angle like this. And all the following cuts would of course be at the same angle. Now this angle, in combination with the width of the cutter, would lead to a certain depth of all the cuts, or between the cuts I should say. And that means that using a smaller diameter cutter, even though it takes 
well in this case four times as long to actually face the entire spoil board, I will also have a spoil board that is four times flatter. And this will help me a lot in the future when tramming the mill completely. And as it was right now, the router was so trammed that all it took was a quick wipe with a 120 grit sandpaper to knock down all the tops and give me a close to perfectly flat surface on the spoil board. And this clip is actually in real time. This is how long it took to actually flatten the entire spoil board and give me a close to perfect result. Now, unfortunately, at the end of the first facing cut, I realized here that one of the corners was lifting up. So in the end, I had to add a small screw to each corner of the spoil board to keep it down. And here you can see how much it lifted during the first facing operation. But after rerunning the G-code, here's the result. And as you can see, the ridges are barely visible, even at really close range. Now, you might be asking yourself how flat the surface of a spoil board cut in this fashion might actually be. Well, let me show you. This is the best straight edge I own. And as you can see, there is almost no light perceptible underneath it, and I checked the entire surface, both at an angle and straight like this, and it's as flat as I can measure it. So that's it for this time, thanks for watching, and if you like what you're seeing, as always, please let me know, subscribe, 